Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 3, Lesson 7, Setting Up a First Person Controller. In this lesson, we're going to set up our player and our game and get it moving around in the level. And I've outlined this into five easy to follow steps. The first step is we're going to create our player character class. Then we'll set up a player controller class. The third step will be to create our game mode class and then set up the default classes in our game mode class. The fourth step will be set to set up mouse look. And then the final step will be to set up the WASD player movement. Let's start by creating our player character class. Here I am back in my game and in my blueprints folder, I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint class. And for this, I want to choose the character class because it's already going to have the movement component on it. And we'll call this BP player character. Next, let's create our player controller class. Here again in my blueprints folder, I'm going to right click and select blueprint class. And then I'll select player controller. And for this, I'll call it BP player controller. The next step is to create our game mode class. So I'll right click, select blueprint class, and then game mode base. And for this, I'll call it game mode. Let's set up our player character and player controller in the game mode as the default classes. Let's open game mode. And then here in class defaults, we can change player controller to BP player controller and default pawn to BP player character. And let's make sure that this is the game mode we're gonna be using in our game. We'll go to project settings and under maps and modes, change our default game mode to BP game mode. And while we're in here, let's just set up the default maps to the map we created. Next, we're gonna set up our mouse look. In the project settings under input, let's set up two axis mappings. The first one we're going to call look up. And for this, we want to set mouse Y. The second axis mapping we're going to call turn. And for this, we'll set up mouse X. In our player character, now we're going to need a camera. So with the capsule selected, let's add a spring arm. And then with the spring arm selected, let's add a camera. And just so we have a visual representation, let's select the mesh and we'll just add a cube. Now in our player controller class, we want to set up those two events. So let's right click and type look up. And we want to select input access look up. Now, while we set our player controller up, it's going to be pretty often that we need to reference the character. So we can create a variable that contains the character, and then we can use that variable where we need it. For this, we're going to use casting. Let's right click and type get player character. And then from here, we want to cast to player character BP. And what this will allow us to do is get the player character, which we know is going to be set to BP player character in our game mode. We'll cast the player character to BP player character, and then this will give us access to that actor. We can drag off of as BP player character and promote to a variable. And I like to call this player character. And one thing I like to do with these casts is if I don't need to use the cast failed, I like to drag off of it and do a print string and just put some type of error code. And that way I know to come back here and look at it if this doesn't work. Let's set up our lookup function next. Let's right click and type look up and we'll see that we have the access event for look up. And for this, we need to gain access to the player character's spring arm component. So let's drag our player character in to get a reference and then type spring arm and say get spring arm. And from this, we want to set the rotation. So from here, set world rotation. And what we want to do is we want to use the value from our mouse Y to adjust the rotation of our spring arm. 
we can right click here and say split pin because we're only going to need the pitch value. And from our spring arm, we can say get world rotation and then split this value as well. The X and Z will just get plugged directly into this. And for the Y, we want to take the existing rotation and add this value to it. So let's do a plus, connect this here, and then connect this to the set value for pitch. Let's test this out. We'll compile and hit play. And now we can adjust looking up and down. Next, let's set it up so that we can turn our player character. Let's type turn and we'll get our axis event that we set up for turn. And for this, we don't just want to change the spring arm rotation, we want to change the entire rotation of the character. So let's get this reference to our player character again. And then we can type yaw input, and you'll see add controller yaw input. And this can be connected directly in. Let's compile and test this out. Now we're able to turn our view and look up and down. So our mouse look is all set up. The next step is to set up WASD player movement. Here I am back in my project settings under the input tab. I want to set up two more axis mappings. Let's create a new axis mapping and call this move forward. And for this, we'll set up W as the positive and S as the negative. We'll create one more axis mapping and this will be called move right. And for this, we'll set up D as the positive and A as the negative. And let's keep this tidy. We'll take our mouse look events and press C and we can create a new comment and we'll call this mouse look. Now we can grab this comment box and we can move these around together. Let's set up our movement events. First, we'll type move forward. We can get our player character and then off of here, type add movement input. So we're gonna add a movement input to our player character. And we need to know what direction we wanna move in. We can get root component. And then from here say, get forward vector. And this will always return the direction that the player is facing. Connect this to world direction, and then connect your axis value to your scale value. Let's test this. We'll compile. Now when we press W, we'll move forward. And when we press S, we'll move in reverse. And right now we have enough to start moving around in this level. But let's set up the last part of this, which is the move right event. So we'll right click again and type move right with our player character reference say add movement input. We'll get the root component again. And then this time we want the right vector. So we can type get right vector, plug this into the world direction, and then axis value into scale value. Let's compile. And now we have a first person controller, but we can see our box floating around. So let's adjust the spring arm so that we're inside of the box. Back in my player character, I'm just gonna take the spring arm and set it to zero. And I'll move it forward slightly and up. Let's compile. And now we have a first person controller. In the next lesson, we're gonna get a character in here and learn about the animation system in Unreal Engine.